The moment I got my first camera, I really liked the piece of machinery. I liked how it felt. I just loved it. Uh, didn't that sound? No, it's like, it's like the kiss of an angel. The only way you're going to get a good picture is if you anticipate it. If you've seen it in the viewfinder, you've missed it because it's going to be gone before you push the shutter. It's just beautiful. It feels great to be here and to remember, you know, this is early on in the Rolling Stone days that I took Steve Miller Band here and we sat right in these benches. I sat him down on the benches and he was going like this and Boz and everybody was here and it was one of the first stories for Rolling Stone. I love those pictures even still, you know. It's not that I miss San Francisco, but I miss those times. Those were such halcyon days. This was 67, and he had signed that big contract with Capitol Records, and who knew how big he was going to become. His music really reached a lot of people, and a lot of people listened to it and bought it, and he made a huge amount of money from his music alone. And we interviewed him before the, uh, before the concert that night. He was so quiet. <laughs> you know, you get on stage and it was 180 degrees. He was like a, lit a firecracker. I mean, he was like a, like a sparkler with energy going everywhere. It was really hard to take a bad picture of Jimi Hendrix. You couldn't. You have to work to take a bad picture of Jimi Hendrix. Where that little kind of cupola is, that was our master bedroom. And behind that, I took a wall down between the other two bedrooms. And that's where I had the studio where I photographed Green's Clearwater and Grateful Dead and on and on and on. One of the most interesting moments in that studio is what I call the concert for one. I didn't have any pictures of Janice in concert. So I call up Janice and said, look, come over, and we'll, what we'll do is we'll simulate a concert. You know, you can bring a microphone and, you know, you look like you're performing. So you don't even have to sing full out, just make it look like you're singing. And she starts singing quietly, you know, well, in five minutes, she cannot, she could not sing anything less than 150%. So within five minutes, she's singing for me. I'm having this concert for one. I'm taking pictures, you know, of her performing. Now with Zappa, I was a little apprehensive about that. Like, what am I going to do for pictures? But he lived up on the top of Laurel Canyon in a log cabin. He said, so come on, let's go out back. And on the hill behind his house, for some reason, but there was all this abandoned road grading equipment. And he started climbing up on all these things and doing weird stuff. I mean, I hardly had to direct him. He was into his own space. As weird as his music was, he was making these weird poses for me. Oh my God, so I'm lucky. I mean, I hard, hardly had to do anything. He wasn't welcoming exactly, you know, but we started talking and he relaxed and we took some pictures. I mean, a lot of people say he's not, he wasn't a good guy, he was hard to get along with, but we had a good time. This was the site of my first Rolling Stone assignment. I remember the dead on the steps here, actually hanging on the steps and people sitting in the window there. In this front room is where the, the, they had the press conference. That, you know, the reason that we were even here, you know, they came and they were all in the light and they were all brandishing the, their weapons and doing weird things to me and I was afraid for my life and uh, but in the end I got this really good picture of him kind of hanging out here and it's a very popular one you know I call it dead on the steps photography for me has been a way to explore the world and find out what I wanted to know about what was going on by virtue of the camera I was able to fulfill my curiosity and find out what this world is all about, you know.